This is Mobile World Live. Now, if you are lucky enough to catch this morning's second keynote session, Value Creation, you'll have heard some great insights from my next guest. And fresh from his appearance on the main stage, he has literally rushed his way to our studios. Delighted to welcome Maurizio Ramos, the CEO of Millicom. Welcome. Great to have you here. Hello, Sasha. Thank you for having me here. I'm delighted to be here in Barcelona again. Yeah, I'll have to say, actually, I said you rushed your way here, but it's quite busy out there, isn't it? It's, it uh... is actually really, really busy. It's so good to be seeing the you know, Mobile World Congress coming back and coming back so strong. We're an amazing industry, and it's good that we continue to do what we do best, which is connect all these you know, wonderful communities. When were you last here? Was it 2019? 2019 mm. seems like just the last week but it's been busy yeah and things the world has changed so much within that that three-year period over the last couple of years you know mm. there are so many things that are almost unrecognizable from uh, from from where we are we were then yeah we've learned one key thing though um broadband connectivity yep broadband connectivity and more broadband connectivity yeah and it's interesting to see how, yes, absolutely, still there, but then looking at that with other things becoming you know, even more of a priority, being a priority in, in different ways. What do you want to get out of your visit to MWC? So, you know, in my keynote, I, I try to highlight the region that we operate in. We operate in 10 markets throughout Latin America, Central America, Bolivia, Colombia, Paraguay. And I spoke of the solitude of this region, making, making use of a quote from Garcia Marquez, the solitude of Latin America, because it's a region that sometimes gets forgotten, sometimes gets misrepresented, misunderstood, and it is full of hidden gems, magical realism, if you remember the book, 100 Years of Solitude, in which we have thriving economies and we have stable politics. Yes, all we hear about, of course, is immigration issues into the U.S. and gangs and violence, but underneath that, Sasha, there is a booming economy with GDP growth and high vaccination rates. And the most important thing, people really, really want broadband. Why do you think, because you, you sound very frustrated when, when, you, when you talk about that, that sort of, you know, this is, this is not what you see. This is, you want, you know, you want to give the truth. You want to talk about this. Why, why do you feel that you're almost having to, you know, come and counter the narrative? Because I feel the tremendous sense of business opportunity. Yeah. But I'm a Latino as well, Hispanic, living in the U.S., both Latino and American. So I also sense that we have a tremendous responsibility that this region gets connected to the world. And I view part of my role as making sure it is understood that those digital highways, those 4G and 5G and fiber networks get built so that this region gets connected to the world. And, and I see this tremendous sense of responsibility because there's so much capital that is required to build these networks that unless I bring the message to where the money comes from, New York and London and Stockholm, we won't have the funds to go build these networks. So where are, well, let's talk about where you are now with it, and then we'll talk about where you want to be in the future. So where are the funds coming from at the moment? So the amounts of money that are required to build these digital highways, this digital infrastructure, for all of Latin America, the, the International Development uh, Bank speaks of $50 billion to build fixed networks, to close the digital divide, and $20 billion to close the digital divide in mobile. That's a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. Every penny must come, both equity and debt, from investors that sit in New York, Boston, Barcelona, Stockholm, London. Uh, and you know, our, our, our business is to funnel that, of course, give it a return, but use it to build these networks that will connect Latin America to the rest of the world. And I, I think there's a tremendous business opportunity. Um, broadband connectivity, mobile broadband connectivity in Latin America is still in its early ages. So where is it at the moment? Give us, give us an idea. You know, you're, you're talking to investors. You're, mm -hmm. you're talking to people who, who then have the money. You're going, all right then, okay. T t tell me, you're saying yeah. what's needed, but why is it needed? 
what is the situation at the moment? So think about this. In the US, here in Barcelona, in Europe, you're used to broadband connectivity being ubiquitous. Everybody has either a 4G or on its way to having a 5G phone, just everyone. Almost 100% mobile penetration. Mobile penetration of data services on 4G network sits at around 50% in our markets, which effectively means one out of two people are still to get a mobile phone with broadband connectivity. And when you look at the residential broadband, the fiber that needs to go into the households, you assume, you know in Europe, 90% of the households are connected to good broadband. In our markets, only a third are connected to reliable broadband. That's why we keep building over a million homes with fiber every year and connecting about 400,000 residential customers every year because there's such a tremendous opportunity and a marvelous way to fulfill our responsibility as well. So you're, you're painting a, a, a very clear picture of the opportunity that, mm -hmm. that you, you see there. You've talked about closing the digital divide and often when we talk about this, it's not just the, the fixed infrastructure but it's also the, the mobile infrastructure as well, because it's not just a case of having access to broadband or to connectivity, mm -hmm. it's actually having the financial access to actually get the device or whatever it is that will connect. And then within homes as well, it's not just having the one connection for the one person in a household, it's ensuring that there is enough for children to do schoolwork, mm -hmm. for people to run small businesses. Uh, you know, and, and so how do you get to that level as well? Yep. I always remind myself and everyone I speak of that we have in the markets we operate largely in Central America, 50% of the population is below 20 years of age. Just imagine the populational dividend that that entails. And just imagine that every one of those youngsters is using a mobile phone or an internet connection at home to get connected, surely they're gaming, surely they're watching content, but they're also teaching themselves to code. So I imagine a world in which you put together broadband connectivity, digital highways, 4G, 5G, fiber networks with a young population, and you let that alchemy come out into innovation. And then I guess your next challenge is ensuring you don't get brain drain because then you need to keep them oh, there no. so that you can utilize on those skills. I can see from your smile that is a nut, that's something no, else. That you've you're... touched on something that is very dear to my heart. As, as you see, it's both business and social responsibility. Yeah. So the countries we operate in are Central America, Bolivia, Colombia, and, and others in the region. And, and everything you hear about is usually around immigration to the US and poverty and gangs, et cetera. And I tell you, Sasha, I have yet to meet one of these young kids that actually want to migrate to the US. I'm both Latino and American. The food is not better in the US, the music, eh, yeah. <laughs> they go to the US to work, right? So just imagine. So you need the jobs, you need to keep the jobs. Right, yeah. so the more we build of these networks in our countries, the more that connectivity is really good, the less they're gonna be migrating to the US. In my view, they'll be working for Silicon Valley out of Tegucigalpa with a great connection. What are your, you talked a lot about the challenges and, and what, what you want to do, but you know, let, let's look at your three year plan, right? What are the actual concrete steps? You want to get maybe out of your visit here or at least want to see sort of put in motion the concrete steps to get to the next three years of where you want to be. First of all, where do you want to be in three years? So I've set upon ourselves the goal to make sure that these digital highways get built. That there really is broadband connectivity that is broad to our economy because I believe that will be the infrastructure that will allow these countries to get connected, to stop migrating, to be able to sell their talent, which you mentioned, to the world. I recall when I was way, way younger, um, I used to write speeches for the government of Colombia about development. And back then, 30 years ago or so, it was all about physical infrastructure. And we talked about how development requires ports and airports and roads so people can get coffee and textiles and bananas exported. Many of those did get built or some of them did not get built. 
So our role is to make sure that these digital highways, they get built so that that talent has access. It's about connecting the unconnected. Mm. It's fascinating to talk to you. Thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time and uh, thank you for your keynote earlier as well. I know a lot of people are talking about it. Maurizio, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for us. having me. Thank you. Now you're watching Mobile World Live, bringing you all the most powerful insights from all of the industry's smartest thinkers every day here at MWC 22. Now it's time for a special report from our partner, Vodafone.